so just a quick look inside the pond. The lads are super chilled here. And you can see here looking up at the top, the surface. That's why I'm putting the surface skimmer in. There's a little bit of protein still stuck to the underside of it. And that's all just kind of waste and mess and stuff. And of course, I've got branches here because I'm cutting everything down. I'll pull that out shortly. But um, yeah, I want to just get rid of that, get um, the surface layer really nice and clean. These guys will be in crystal clear water come next summer. Godzilla, king of the pond. As buddies, and I'm gonna pull out these tubs as well because, yeah, that was a that was a plant, um, a plant pot, plant pot. There was about four or five plant pots there, and they absolutely destroyed them all on me. They ruined them. So yeah, no plant pots left with plants in them. Thanks to Godzilla, he actually pulled them. Um, that that um that pipe there that's running into the filter, and I'll show you what way that's working out that I have a bit more access. So um. That is going into this bigger pipe here. Focus. It's going into that bigger pipe there. And that pipe runs down underneath all of, if you pull this back a little bit, you can see underneath the mint. You know what, the mint's off the ground so thick you won't even see. So underneath all that mint there. Hang on. Where are we? <laughs> bit better? Yeah, a bit better. Okay, so underneath all of that mint, and this section here, all this section, this pipe runs really, really deep down, like down to nearly the bottom of where the depth of the pond is, and it runs back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, and it snakes all the way around, full of holes, like hundreds, thousands of holes in it. That took me forever. And that water going through there sprays out through that, comes up through all the stones and gravel that's in here. I'll give you a quick look at that. If you haven't seen it, oh, I'm slipping. It's a mess here. Um, so, it's coming up here. See all oh, the Aladea grown here. Tons of it. Like I drew a couple of strands in and it's grown along. So, you can see it's kind of silting up here. So, there's tons, literally tons of the stone. It's full of good bacteria, worms, snails, the whole lot. So, it's uh, look, you can see the little wormy guys there. They're super. They break everything down. Crawl around in my hand. They're amazing. So, get off. They're amazing. But like them in there, not my hands. So goes in underneath here and it sprays up. And that kind of snakes back and forth. And there's actually another one. That's where the so that's connected now to the 10,000 litre an hour in the corner. There's a 5,000 litre an hour just here as well. So as the water comes down, it uh as the water comes down, it comes along here, kind of sediment gets caught here and it gets trapped in there, pumps straight in. Anything that whirls around because there is a circular motion ends up getting caught by this guy here and it that comes in and it snakes underneath here again as well and it goes through all these plants and stone now the bit that i want to kind of fix is this bit here because that's been kind of a sediment trap and um, this section here and you can actually see all that sediment underneath there on the rocks and stuff i'll give that a bit of a vac um but that's okay so that what that's telling me is that some of you know some of that fine particulate waste is getting through the filter and the plants aren't able to use it if it's down there and not up here. So what I want to do is I want to get that filled with stone up really nice and high and I literally want to have the water run the, skimming across the top of the stone. Now, when I jumped up from 5,000 5, litres an hour to 10,000 litres an hour, it made a big difference. And then 10 to 15,000 litres an hour really raised the level here, it raised it up a bit. So, um, so what we were looking at there, actually, this is the difference. So see that stone there? That is, okay, that's up to like, that's that deep on my finger. So what, like two, two and a half inches, right? Going from 10,000 liters an hour volume flowing through this wetland bog filter to 15,000 liters an hour, raised it up by that much. So that's the difference. So you have to be careful when you're, you can't just jump filters and expect everything to always be fine either. That extra volume going through um, if this wasn't set up to kind of deal with that and I didn't have room to play with, it could have just spilled out the sides. And the problem with my last filter was, there was such a dense amount of roots from, it was mainly mint in that bog, uh, wetlands bog filter before I'd done this one up. Um, the mint had filled it up so much that the actual level of the water pushed up and was coming up over the edge of it. Because uh, if you go to my YouTube and check that video out, the pond, the pond build, the restoration of this, because, oh my God, you think this is bad now? Like this was in some state. Um, 
Guys love that water water coming back over there to chill out there all day. Especially Godzuki there. Mothra. And Mothra's the big yellow lady. There's little Godzuki there. Scaleless with just that little zipper down his back. Sorry about the net again. Heron. We'll get rid of that soon enough though. But anyway, this looks a real mess back here, so I'm gonna tidy it up. There was an ash tree here. Um, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the rest of that stump and I'm just gonna clear an awful lot of these bushes and make access along here because God they've really overgrown and uh, I'd like to finish off the rockery get some nice plants here and um, but we won't be doing that until we get the pergola in because there's no point in planting this up and then traipsing over because there'll be a post going back here there'll be posts going over here there and I'm gonna have to put them down there as well so and that's gonna be it's gonna be awesome we'll get that sorted once we're done but that that is kind of a quick overview i just said while i am here i'll give you a quick look oh sorry and um so this was this was that bush there <laughs> that, that looks like a bush that's grown there it's not i cut it out from the the roots because i couldn't i couldn't risk um i didn't want to risk all of these berries they were all coming off it as i was chopping it up and going in these guys their metabolisms aren't moving very quickly at the moment so if they fill themselves up with berries and um, they could just go nasty and gassy and uh, end up rupturing their bellies and go absolutely rancid in them so we definitely don't want that and um, yeah so really happy water's getting nice and clear and um, but we've got a long way to go and um, what temperature are we running at here now at the moment let me see we have a little oh, in the way back here oh hidden away focus so you can see there a bit over 12 degrees at the moment now it hasn't been getting i'll put you back you kind of hides in a little gap in there and yet these guys they aren't getting much by way of food at the moment just given that temperature drop then have a look you can see them there now these are big fish they're big fish Mothra there the big one the top and where is he the king Godzilla a monster back there they're about 15 years old them Godzuki center frame got the little zipper on the back oh my god what a beautiful fish um the kind of nearly the 10 well they were the 10 biggest actually but some of my ones are definitely after catching up over the summer. They're, anyway, took on that red and white one. Oh God, lovely fish. A uh, bunch of them took on as rescues during the summer. And I've done a couple of videos on that, but yeah, look at that. All that stuff up on top, we want rid of that. The bottom's starting to clear up quite a bit. A little bit of algae and some of the stones. It's all right though. That is one huge shabunkin. That is probably the most timid fish in the pond an absolute just monster of a fish considering it was quite small when I got him it's funny I got a bunch of fish look that fish is a bit of a tumor a bit of a tumor a significant tumor in one of its gill plates so we'll see we'll see about that doesn't seem effective by now at the moment look at that nice big high back ryuk in there it's a nice fish and um, that platinum with the orange on his face and gill plate is oh my god the platinum is just absolutely perfect like perfect he's so such a nice fish see him there now oh my goodness look camera's freaking out like an angel a little bit shy with the camera in they're not like my fancies over beyond who just do not care shabunkin <laughs> he was a rescue as well, he's missing a big patch out of the back of his fin, that's okay, of his dorsal fin. Got a couple of rescues in here, love his rescue of fish if I can help it. That giant white, just regular body goldfish was one of the first ones here, and there's a bunch of fish in it that have bred from it. Look at this guy, look at the scales. Look at these guys, there are, I, I personally think that there's a couple of nice fish here. Fins in here, gas. Yeah, I think there's a couple of nice fish here, let me know what you think guys. Just know what's your favorite you can see there's some of the babies there babies it just it's a that's a big goldfish it's just retained it's a kind of natural color here in the pond that'll that'll go completely orange now next year see that orange on the bottom that was a baby 
the big one, sorry, orange on the bottom, there's loads of orange ones, the big one that's hiding in behind that ghost. That ghost actually has one of the biggest growth rates in the pond now, I have to say, of all the fish. That was a relatively small fish, and I can't get over how big she's at the getting, like just absolutely huge. The biggest growth rates are definitely that one, and where's it? Oh, there we go. I love that fish. Black one, the silver patches. Now, camera's not really picking up, but they are literally a mirror finish. The center of the frame there, see him? Oh my goodness. It's a big fish. Now, that was a small fish when I got it. Only a couple of inches. That fish is getting big. Now you can see the fish to the side of him. He has a virus. God, I can't, why can I not remember the name? That virus is kind of particular to uh, the genetics of the host. So he's not going to affect any of the other fish in the pond. It is literally just uh, him. And if it, the virus, it will only kind of jump the family members. So there's no real risk of anybody else getting it in the pond. So that's the only reason he's in there with them. If there was any risk, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had them in. Oh, black goldfish, you never see them, but they are huge. They're just deadly. Great way of knowing if you've got an issue like ick or anything like that. Now, when it comes to like chemicals and stuff like that, I, I use none. I don't use salt, I don't use chemicals. Uh, I use a little bit of the chlorinator. Of course, I don't want chlorine going into the pond and wrecking that beautiful wet and bog filter on me. But I don't use any of that stuff at all. And the guys do super. Absolutely super. Look at that long finned black regular goldfish. Just beautiful. Yeah, there's that big black and silver koi. He's just. Ah, great, great fish. Um, the little dragon koi there in the center. Just a uh, the smaller in the center. That looked like as if he was kind of sickly for a long time. Um, after I got him. And all of a sudden, now and nowhere, it just came good. A little bit, he's quite a nervous fish because the amount of times I had to try and catch him because he needed like little salt dips to try and help get get his stomach cleared and just little bits and pieces of stuff. That's a big fish there, isn't it? That's one of the ones that I rescued. That's a big chunky fish. They were in a tiny little kidney bean shaped pond. The tent, literally, that one, the one below it, Godzilla there. That big, beautiful monster. Um, that one, the one with the, oh no, that, that wasn't, that's one of my ailments. Look at the scales on the side of that fish, they are massive. The one just above it though. Um, uh, yeah, Mothra there. Big, beautiful, yellowy gold one. Bunch of them, like the 10 biggest fish in here nearly. We're all in a little tiny kidney bean shaped pond. They were the rescues. And you should have seen it when I got them in here. They absolutely love it. Now, the reason these Ryukans are staying out here is because, um, I was talking about it in a video the other day, they were really bullying the girls. They're they're big fish, like, they, like, geez, I should really try to find a golf ball and throw it in for, actually, I, the reason I didn't was because I'd be afraid of Godzilla swallowing it. He's that big. Um, but yeah, I, um, I didn't want to put the Ryukans in my own pond because, in the, with the fancy goldfish in my heated raised pond for the winter because he's too big and powerful. He actually killed, him and do 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 where is the other Ryukin? Another little shy fella. Where's the 5000 litre in our pump pump in that direction? What a scale's name. Where's the other Ryukin? He's a little bit darker, he's a little tricolor, red, white, black. Ah, in the background, in the center there. So that Ryukin and that other big, beautiful monster there. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure between them they managed to kill about four pearl scales on me um, when they weren't anywhere near as big as they are now. They weren't anywhere near as big as the pearl scales. They're just monster chaps. They really are. So, um, yeah, like, because goldfish in general spawn first thing in the morning, by the time you get out, these lads would have caused damage. And yeah, like, I found three or four pearl scales in total. Turned out every one of my pearl scales was just a young female. And they all started spawning very young. So yeah, so they kind of bash them around me. So I have no interest in putting them in the pond, the fancy goldfish pond, for the sake of the other fish. Because I have a bunch of females in there that are a little bit more fragile. Than they but that's it folks, just wanted to give you a quick look and it turned into a long look. So I hope you enjoyed this. And yeah, let me know which is your favourite fish. And check me out on Instagram, The Joy of Aquascaping. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye!